god. Over there, say she came running down the street already on fire. You're thinking it's a rape. That's why I called the panty police. Found her torn underwear in that doorway. Guy must have ripped him off before he torched her. She's pretty crispy. Any prayer of getting DNA? Only if you have a special connection upstairs. With any luck, lab will find something on the underwear. The guy was careless. Maybe he left something else behind. Looks like there's blood on that pipe. He could have hit her in the head with it. it smells like fuel oil. You'd have to add an accelerant to light her up. We'll run a gas chromo. See what he used. Well, there's no mailing labels on these magazines. But we got a register receipt. Timestamp says 714. Witnesses said they saw around 740. So maybe she bought the magazines nearby. We'll find the newsstand. Or better yet, get prints. Any ID, purse? Fire melted it onto her body. I've never seen a woman raped and then burned alive. The guy's looking to send a message. My wife? I haven't seen her since last evening. She's with a friend. Which friend would that be? Uh, my wife has many friends. Are you two not getting along? Of course we are. Mr. Albisi, is this your wife? Not to be rude, but it seems that if everything was fine, you'd know where she spent the night. Well, I'll tell you, you know what I find strange? We ask you about your wife. You're not the least bit curious why we're asking. Did she file a new complaint? How I mistreat and harass her? Why? You like to beat her up? I would never hurt Mira. Where were you last night? My mother and I worked here late putting the paper to bed. My mother's Jaslyn Elbizi. She's well known in the community. Is she here today? She took the day off. And how late did you two work? Mira doesn't like being alone in the apartment after dark. Sometimes she visits friends in Bay Ridge and stays over. Which friends? I, I, I don't know. Recognize his tattoo? Yes. And that mole. It's Mira. Why do you have that photograph? Mr. Albisi, we're very sorry. Your wife was murdered last night. No. She was burned to death. Who could have done this? We're hoping you can help us with that. I wouldn't have any idea. What were they fighting about? I don't know. Mira said she cut herself. I didn't believe her. Must have a reason for that. Well, she was struggling, you know. It was obvious. She had no one to talk to. She told me she was true to Islam, but you could see this lady wanted some freedom. You ever talk to her husband? I don't go where I'm not wanted. Got a problem with the Arabs? No. He's got a problem with me. He's an educated guy. I think he looks down on trades people. Did Mira fight with her mother-in-law? She hated living with the old lady. She felt squeezed. When they shouted, they turned up the stereo. Did you ever mention anybody that you confided in? Uh, there was one friend, a guy who works for some do-good or religious group. He's Jewish. She wanted me to meet him. Name's uh, Feldman, Joshua Feldman. Yeah, she thought since I'm Jewish, I'd make a donation. He beat her up, didn't he? A lunatic husband of hers. Is that why you're here? Mr. Feldman, did you see Mara last night? Is she in the hospital? Tell me. Was she here last night? I was expecting her. We're trying to build bridges here between Muslims and Jews, and she wanted to be a part of it. When she didn't show up, I called her. Her mother-in-law answered, and I hung up. Why didn't you leave a message? A strange man calling a married Muslim woman might not go over too well. So she kept her work here secret? Yes. Mira's afraid her husband will keep her from coming. Please, tell me, is she all right? Mr. Feldman, last night, Mira was attacked two blocks from here. Maybe you read today's paper? No. Oh. That was Mira? Oh, God, no. So you two were more than friends. We were in love. She was going to leave, and we were going to live together. Did her husband know about all this? Yes. When she told him I was Jewish, she said he'd never let her go, never let her leave. She disgraced our family. But I still loved her. Your wife wanted a divorce and you refused. Mira wanted to go. She could go. Not if you threatened to kill her. I would never do that. Yeah, you would. The neighbor said that you split her lip. It was an accident. We were both ill-tempered. Well, that's not what her boyfriend said. You see, Mr. LBC, I want to believe you. I do. 
But you find out that your wife is having an affair with a Jewish man, and I'm wondering how somebody like you would react. Someone like me? He puts his head down. He cries. He mourns the loss of his son because his wife gets custody. He doesn't set the woman he loves on fire. Circumstantial, unless you get permission to talk to his kid. A six-year-old whose mother was just murdered. No judge will let us near him unless we indict the father. Sure we got the right people? Yeah, why? Then we got a copycat. What? 94th Street and 2nd Ave near the big mosque. Man set on fire. Name was Tariq Assad, 27. Didn't live to make it to the ambulance, but we got a witness. The witness is Jason Malavi. So the guy in flames came toward him, and he heard somebody shouting, killer. You'll burn in hell for what you did to us. Just what the city needs to read in tomorrow's papers. Mr. Malavi? Jason? Captain Craig? How you doing? Look, we'd like you not to repeat what you saw to the press. You think you can handle that? I guess, yeah, but I could get real money for this. Well, that could compromise our investigation. I think maybe the Inquirer would pay me for an interview. You could turn them down. It depends how much they offer. Detective Munch? Yes, sir. Take this young man into custody as a material witness. Lock him up somewhere comfortable. I know just the place. You can't do this to me. He just did. Same MO, torn underwear on the ground and the smell of fuel oil. Didn't really say anything about fuel oil. That's definitely not a copycat. You got a pipe with blood and tissue like the first victim. Only the last one had cervical cells. With a male victim, I'm betting this one will be rectal. We got to figure out how this guy picks his victims, and we got to do it fast. There's one distinction he's not making. First one's a female, 29. Second victim's a male, 27. They both look Middle Eastern. Other than that, so far, they got nothing else in common. Except that he symbolically raped them and set them on fire. Crime of opportunity, or does he stalk them? It's hard to say, but he seems impulsive. He brings a pipe with him. That's premeditation. And he leads off the pipes? Old corroded junk, different manufacturers. He could have picked it up off the street. Using a pipe as a penis, so he's just your garden variety, sexually repressed racist. Actually, I think the racism is a cover, a mask for inadequacies. He probably has conscious feelings of being wronged, cheated by life. And using a pipe on both sexes? A need to humiliate. These offenders were often humiliated or abused as children. So you're saying racism what sets him off? In a way, yes. He sees these futures that are Middle Eastern. That person is the other. This killer needs someone different from himself to hate. He sees an Arab, he thinks terrorist. Well, he's not alone. Even normal people have crazy thoughts, but we don't act on them. There's Tariq Assad. And there's Mira in the front. The guy in the baseball cap, he was standing next to Tariq. Now, watch. Saddling up next to Mira. Do you know him? No, I've never seen him before. What's on his jacket? Can you freeze that for me? Can you bring it in closer? Donahue Heating Service. Heating. As in fuel oil. Yeah, it's Sean Webster. Drives a truck for us. Is he in some kind of trouble? I just want to talk to him. He's clocking in, top of his shift. Hey, Sean! Some cops here want to talk to you. Sean. What are you running from, Sean? Oh. Just want to have a little chat? Ah. There's an arrest for the murders of Tariq Assad and Mira El Beasley. No, look, you don't want to do this. Just listen to me. You'll let me go. Remain, shut up. You have the right to remain silent. You give up that right, anything you say can will be used against you. But you're like me. I know you are, man. All right. Detective Tutuola. Sean Webster. And what's he doing here? You invited him? You don't like me very much, do you? Actually, I'm not all that invested either way. What do you see in her? You know what I see? I think she's got some color in her. What's in you? Arab? Raghead? Oh, and you look at two, boy. You got some raghead in you? In Africa, folks moved around intermixing for thousands of years. I could be part Arab. Mm. Well, that would explain why your coon brothers went to the enemy. Black Muslims, traitors to the American people. You can call me anything you want, Sean. Coon, traitor, raghead, towelhead. I got some words for you. Killer, psycho. Hey. I'm no psycho. You burned two innocent people to death. They weren't innocent. They had to die or they're going to kill us all. Well, who was Mira Albisi going to kill? She was working for peace. I didn't want to kill her.
tore up that innocent woman with that pipe. Then you burned her alive. You're sick. She said that she was a good American. And that raghead said that he was our friend. They're all liars. We have to stop them or they're gonna kill us all.